Hello viewers, welcome to Artflix on CBA TV. The show where we discuss about uh, things that happen around the globe through creative uh, work of writers in different parts of the world. We have told the West Africa, we've told the East Africa. This time around, we are going to South Africa and we're discussing about the work of um, Bassi Head. Bassi Head has uh, done a lot of uh, work, particularly with two different countries. Which countries are we talking about? By the time we go to the other side of the studio, we'll be discussing about the countries this woman has thoroughly explored in detail. Meet you there. Welcome back uh, to the other side of the studio. We'll be discussing about this very interesting uh, author from uh, South Africa. And um, her name is um, Bassi, Bassi Head. I'm uh, just very surprised about the name. Uh, Head, as an African, having a name as Head. What could this one mean? And uh, how could she decide to uh, have this? What kind of author is he? Is he someone who appreciates our culture, our nature, our Africanism? Uh, this is part of what we'll be discussing in detail in this very important uh, uh, show, Hard Flakes. So welcome to the show, Mr. Baka. Well, thank you very much. So we will be uh, looking at uh, when the rain clouds uh, gather. Mm. When they gather, what is the rain? What is the cloud? Let's start with the person who even put this kind of a title in as uh, work. Who is uh, Bassi Head? Uh, Bassi Head is a uh, is South African, uh, but uh, she identifies as a as a Matuana. She's uh, she Batuana rather, mm -hmm. and uh, because she lived uh, uh, most of her adult life in Botswana. Bus Botswana. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came to Botswana for a reason because, uh, as at the time she was born, she, like uh, Trevor Noah's uh, title, she was born a crime, mm -hmm. because she was born uh, into uh, to a father who is black and a mother who is white, mm -hmm. and uh, then it was uh, it was against the law for uh, copulation to happen between a white woman and a black man. Mm -hmm. So, but that happened, and her mother had uh, this uh, psychotic disorder then, uh, I think bipolar disorder, which later came to affect uh, Bessie Head herself. Mm -hmm. So, she grew up in the racial uh, society, and when she was born, because the, it was against the law for uh, the white man and the white woman to get married or even have children together, she was uh, taken from her mother, but her mother bestowed the name Bessie on her, uh, Bessie Amelia Emery. That's a uh, full name. Yeah. So when she was first taken to a foster home and uh, given to a white uh, family, when she was living there, the white family discovers after some weeks that the child that had been brought to them was not actually white, as they believed that it was a brown child. Yeah. And uh, brown means like what you call the equivalence of mulatto yeah. in the American society. So when they discovered that this was the problem, they had to transfer her again to another black family, mm -hmm. uh, Neil, I think that's the name of the foster mother who she grew up with, mm -hmm. and that one uh, gave her strict uh, Catholic discipline. Mm -hmm. She grew up, but one thing that uh, her black family did not like about her was that she was too much interested in books. Mm -hmm. Until she got to the higher level of education, she was uh, put in a uh, black boarding school, and that was where she... Uh, discovered actually because she wanted to go home for holidays and the administrate the government told her that no you can't go home to that family mm -hmm. because that's not a real family mm -hmm. so she got to discover that uh, the circumstances surrounding her bed at that very young age and it kept her devastated mm -hmm. so it was something that would haunt her into her adult life she grew up in uh, become a teacher yeah. uh, she was a certified teacher after some uh, time of teaching she resigned her appointment mm -hmm. and uh, moved into journalism in journalism, she became entangled with uh, the South African uh, black and white racial politics, mm -hmm. and uh, it gave her a troubled time because at a point in time she was arrested and later uh, let free to go. So with that now, she was depressed. She wanted to be out of the 
the, the hatred, the racial uh, chauvinism that has come to characterize the South African society. So she made her way to Botswana and that was where she lived the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. So it was the South African experience actually serves as the background for most of our stories. And in fact, uh, you can say most of them are autobiographical. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's look at um, a synopsis of this, uh, um, this, uh, write, this uh, creative write-up. Uh, what we call when the rain uh, clouds gather. Yeah, when the rain clouds gather is a, uh, is our first novel. Uh, after that, she wrote that thing. She wrote the Cardinals and uh, a question of power. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, when the rain clouds gather is uh, quite uh, unique because of what uh, it entails. Uh, in the story, we see a young man, Makaya uh, Masenge, I think Makaya. So Makaya uh, was involved in the bo in the bombing in. South Africa against the apartheid, apartheid uh, uh, South African government yeah. and uh, he ran away from South Africa and came to a village in uh, Botswana. Mm -hmm. While there, the, at first, the locals were not receptive of him, they were cautious of him, they were suspicious of him, mm -hmm. but he gained the trust of an old man there in that village and soon he was introduced to a white man. Uh, and the white man who has been there, he came to inspire agricultural revolution amongst the people of Botswana who have been having uh, years of uh, drought in the system. So he inspired the system of uh, agriculture, which would ensure that the people uh, become progressive. He was bringing a new system to the people and uh, the people, the society was very receptive of him. Yes. But there was the village chief, Chief Matenge, who didn't want to go in line because he felt if the people became rich as he himself is, they would no longer yes. submit to him. Yes. So his, uh, his strength was based on the, uh, the suppression of the people to make them remain poor so that they can continue to see him as a revered leader. Yes. So every step that the, the white man tries to take to improve the, that agricultural society, yeah. the, the, this man comes and uh, uh, puts, becomes a stumbling block to it and reverses the steps. He stops everything from happening to the people. So, and uh, this was not progressive enough you know, because his target was the people must not become rich. If they become rich, then they will no longer revere me as a leader. Mm -hmm. So it became, it got to the height of it and the people became frustrated by his effort mm -hmm. uh, towards damaging the things they, they invest uh, their, their, their time into. So they all got up and decided to confront him. And when they went to him to confront him, he saw that the people were coming. He became scared and at the end of the day, he had to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So that was how the, the novel ended there. So there you see that the, if, what, what, what uh, Bessie Head is saying is that if people can come together, express love, and stand against oppression, the oppressors will become afraid and eventually it disappears into oblivion. And that was what happened with uh, Chief Matenge because he, he was uh, fighting the force, of uh, the, the force of progress. He was fighting love among the people. He was, he was bringing hatred where there was none. And the people decided to come up against him and that resulted to his end. So in the same vein, we can see that uh, the novel uh, uh, echoes uh, the kind of thing that is happening in South Africa where you have the white oppressors versus the, the black who are the oppressed. And, you know, with this uh, clash, you can see that love and unity amongst the people was what brought down the oppressor because we discovered that the oppressor lives based on the, it, it, it thrives based on the fear of the people. And if the fear ceases to exist, if the people cease to fear him, they cease to look upon him as a different being from who they are, then they can bring him to their level or make him go away. So Chief uh, Matenge is a symbol of the hatred, the oppression that exists in not only in South African society, but in every human society. So and the, the only way you can defeat that hatred is by inspiring love and unity amongst the people that should work with one mind. There's something I noticed in this uh, story, which is um, a little bit uh, in contrast with uh, what is happening in South Africa. It's like uh, what is happening in Botswana. It's a little bit different from what is happening in South Africa. Yeah. We have the concept of dogs eating dogs, like somebody where you will put it, mm. you know? So dogs eating dogs, you have <clears throat> Africans oppressing Africans. And you have a foreign person, okay? So to speak, in this case, the whites, mm. all right? Trying to rescue Africa 
but the people who are in the M of affair yeah. do not want their people to be rescued. The That's the case of the picture I see in Botswana. On the other side, if you look at the, history, the hist historical part of uh, yeah. um, uh, South Africa, what you find out is you have the whites the suppressing the blacks, the, the blacks yeah. and uh, which led to retaliation. Mm -hmm. You know, and that retaliation finally affected the, uh, the unfortunate Afghast like uh, um, uh, um, uh, Bessie, yeah. you know. So, how do you see these two parts? Uh, Is that a message he's also trying to convey? Yes, I think basically uh, Bessie Head wants to, she, because at one time she mentioned that, mm. uh, you know, she was accused of rather writing uh, distances herself from the from the uh, racial segregation yeah. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to write about it. Yeah. She was writing a lot about love and uh, uh, people coming together, unity and all that. Mm -hmm. So they call her an escape is a coward. And you, you know, looking at that relationship, the opposite existed in uh, in Botswana, as you've yeah. mentioned. Yeah. But rather what Bessie Head tries to identify with is that universally in every human society, mm -hmm. they are always the oppressors mm -hmm. and they are the oppressed. Mm -hmm. Right, and you see that even in a question of power, mm. so it doesn't have to do with just yes. you having the white race, a white face, or something. Mm. But the message she's passing across is that if the press can unite and work for their own progress, mm. because even when she was arrested in South Africa, it was uh, some part of her own team, mm. which uh, the people she was uh, supporting that gave her out, and it just, so she felt betrayed and depressed. Mm. So she understood that. Where there is no unity, you cannot achieve uh, any purpose at all. Yeah. So that was what she she was striving for. So we see that you know, it's not an issue of white or black, rather to her. It's basically that there is on one side there is the oppressor, and there is on the other side there are the oppressed. So and you see the, the clash between the two sides there. Let's look at um, the modern happenings around the globe today. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, countries like uh, Lebanon, you see there is protest going on there. If you consider Iraq, mm -hmm. even um, one of the heads just uh, resigned, the prime minister. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you also consider Georgia, you know, even in the European world, if you consider France, mm -hmm. you consider Greece, mm -hmm. you see that people come together to fight the oppressors mm -hmm. who are minority. Uh, a few of them succeeded. But we've realized that majority end up being dealt with, like in the case of uh, um, uh, this uh, part of uh, China, that they are calling for independence for Hong some Kong. time now, Hong Kong. So they have been trying to, uh, th for the past six months now, they've been on the same, and this was led by the students. They torture some of them, some of them are in jail, you know. Do you feel that that's uh, evil collectivism can still make you to achieve anything if you don't have other instruments to support yourself. One thing I've come to understand is that uh, uh, either oppression or suppression uh, cannot withstand uh, the strength of time. Mm. And uh, where truth and justice exist, mm. oppressors will surely have to die down. Mm. So, so, and that is what I believe will happen because we've seen from past experiences, nobody ever believed that uh, Yaya Jami will go uh, will go out of power one day. You know, he was there for long, and everybody at the point. You know, some people were born in Gambia, grew up into adulthood, yeah. and have only known Yaya Jami as the president of the yeah. country. Mm -hmm. The same can also be said of uh, Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. Yeah. But today, where are they? Mm -hmm. So you see, for every uh, level of oppression, when it's time for the truth to grow, mm -hmm. you know, truth is like the seed you plant in the ground. No matter how you cover it with the sand, mm -hmm. it will still uh, come out into the air. Mm -hmm. So the people will keep protesting. Even in uh, in Somalia, the past Somalia, you know what happens? The same thing, students were dealt with based on the record. Mm -hmm. Students came out to protest and the government felt that they should be incarcerated. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, where is that government today? It shows that wherever there is a will, there is a way. And when people are committed mm -hmm. to defeating an oppressive power, mm -hmm. it will surely go down. Yeah, surely wherever there is a will, 
there is always a way. So I believe that of uh, that of uh, China or this mm. it's it's a matter of time. It's a matter yeah. of. Time. We will discuss about this in detail. Let's just go for a break. When we come back, we'll continue from where we have. See you then. Welcome to QETC Qalam Education and Technical Center. I am Ahmed Mohammed Ahmed. I am a student of Qalam Educational and Technical Center. Qalam Education and Technical Center is a place that you can improve your English language. I came with zero English. Now I'm better. Come to Qalam Education and Technical Center. This will help you to improve your English, your listening, your speaking, your writing and reading. If you want to speak confidently without fearing, come and try Qalam and learn how to speak in front of thousand people without fear. <laughs> Welcome back uh, from the break. Uh, we are on the same show, what we call uh, Artflix on CBA TV. And we are discussing about Bassi Heads uh, when the rain clouds gather. Now we're going to be looking at the linguistic parts of this. From the title up to the content, we're going to be looking at the characterization and some other elements of uh, creative uh, writing in the work of this unique uh, uh, South African. Uh, a uh, rooted writer. Let's look at it from that angle. Um, when the rain clouds gather, why this title? Uh, I think it has to do with, uh, you see, uh, one thing about Bessie Head is that apart from writing, she's in love with, uh, do I call it nature? I think she's in love with, with soil mm -hmm. uh, because uh, she was much into uh, planting, mm -hmm. cultivation of uh, crops. Uh, we because, call them the romanticists. Uh, yeah, not the not not the <laughs> who love uh, nature. Uh, no, she was she didn't identify as a romanticist uh, in the actual sense, mm -hmm. but uh, still there was that love for farming and cultivation, and it's reflected in in, uh, in the stories she tell. Mm -hmm. She there was that uh, familiarity with that. And the story was set at the time where the Botswana society was. Uh, experiencing a long drought mm -hmm. and when they were experiencing a long drought it means that the crops could not grow mm -hmm. and uh, this was basically uh, it wasn't an agrarian society because of the scarcity of rainwater mm -hmm. so and they were much into animal husbandry mm -hmm. so they need to, to take the animals to graze mm -hmm. And uh, the white man actually came with a system. That's, I think Gilbert was his name. Gilbert came with a system and asked them that, uh, why don't you, instead of grazing in this area, take the animals far afield mm -hmm. and let this area grow for a while. Then when this area, that you have enough grass here, you can uh, abandon that side and come here rather than grazing all around. And at the end of the day, you, you are losing out entirely because at the end of the day, the animal still depends on whatever grows from the ground to, to feed on. So it brought into the system and also introduced a type of farming. So mm -hmm. people were expecting the rains to come after they've planted. They were expecting the rains to come and water. Mm -hmm. So and the gathering of the rain was a symbol of uh, liberation because when it comes of the clouds it was a symbol of an approaching rain. So mm -hmm. when the clouds gather and the rain falls to the ground, mm -hmm. the crops will grow. Mm -hmm. So and in that sense, it also symbolizes the the gathering of the of the people against their oppressor, Chief Matenge. Mm -hmm. So that's you know when the rain clouds gather and it's it's going to rain heavily mm -hmm. on the, on the ground. So it's a symbol of the people gathering. And there will be relief. Yeah, there will be relief. Mm -hmm. uh, the crops would grow. Mm -hmm. So I think that is that is the the, the symbolic aspect of the title mm -hmm. or the role the title plays there. And it also mirrors the mm -hmm. current situation in the in the society as at the time the novel is set. Let's look at the life of the, the white man, particularly the theme of uh, uh, ignorance and um, uh, exposure combi combined together, which I see has a significant effect, theme of education, mm -hmm. or we always call ignorance, mm -hmm. uh, on the life of the people, particularly the poor Botswana, you know, 
uh, how has the writer been able to use this theme to rescue the situation? Because if you are looking at the trend of uh, writing, there must always be resolution. I mean, uh, Gilbert actually came from he came from England, mm -hmm. and he felt he, I think he was a research student in the novel, mm -hmm. and he felt he could make an impact in the African, the rural African society. So he was uh, deeply committed to what he came there to do, mm -hmm. even though the natives, like the chief Matengi, suspected him of coming with something else. Mm -hmm. But he actually came with the mind to liberate the people mm -hmm. from their from the acute poverty and uh, the misery they have been facing mm -hmm. over the years. So, and he coming to introduce a new system, which was at first uh, regarded with suspicion. Mm -hmm. You know, with, it was a, a clash of modernity against uh, what is the norm, the way, the former way of the old way of life. Mm -hmm. So he was much educated and his education played out in what he, the impact he was making mm -hmm. in the society. So we, it was a question of whether the people were ready to accept uh, change, mm -hmm. Or not, mm -hmm. so and uh, the the people were embraced it, but the, the the powers that be didn't want him to succeed, mm -hmm. so they wanted the people to be sub subservient still, and that was actually had a ripple effect, and it, it boomeranged on Chief Matenge. So we see that the impact education plays, and not just education when it's relevant mm -hmm. to the people it is meant to serve. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gilbert's knowledge in agriculture actually helped improve the lives of the people and they found alternative ways to plant their crops rather than uh, waiting the rain and all that. And they, they also learned how to preserve space of land for animal grazing. So how has ignorance affected the people? Uh, ignorance, I wouldn't say ignorance uh, per se because being an illiterate or not being educated, in edu educated formally is... Uh, doesn't doesn't imply ignorance it's rather i would rather look at it as a way of life which they have known and uh, somebody is bringing a new system into play and they are left with the option of accepting or rejecting it which rather they, they embraced the system so i cannot say it is uh, i term it ignorance because uh, they are unaware of what is right that is with them particularly when you talk about relocating the grazing area, you know, mm -hmm. to another side. They were ignorant of the importance of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't use the word illiteracy. Illiteracy is an aspect, but ignorance is another thing, and it's a disease, you know? So that really affected them. That's why I was looking at that part. I'm not looking at illiteracy, because somebody can be educated and might also be ignorant. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you understand? So how has that ignorance affected the people? Uh, I think it has affected it has affected them in the aspect of their farming. They could not improve their system of mm -hmm. uh, of uh, getting food or rearing of animals mm -hmm. until Gilbert came and gave them the key, and with that they were able to progress uh, forward. And also, the, not just on the people's side. Yeah. I think with with the idea that uh, Gilbert came, there was that a feeling of uh, liberation mm -hmm. which came to the people before they would never dare look in the eye of their chief and that's why when the chief saw that the people were gathering against him mm -hmm. he was so scared that he had to commit suicide mm -hmm. so i think uh gilbert coming into the scenario played an important role in the getting the people liberated from uh, their, their their oppressors mm -hmm. and uh, he also brought in great ideas that was to move the society forward so that is the aspect I see that uh, the, uh, the Gilbert's knowledge <laughs> plays a great role yeah. in the people's life because it changed the course of things for them. The society was just a simple, yeah. uh, rustic society yeah. until Gilbert came and it then began to have more potentials than even the capital city itself. It was just a rural village, yeah. but yeah. the main city was outside of it. Mm -hmm. But these people had, with what they were able to achieve yeah. within the space of time, it shows that there was more, more prospects mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. just for them to remove uh, the, the barrier standing in the way, which was represented by uh, Chief Matenge. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look at the, one of the key parts of the life of this uh, Bessie, Bessie Head, mm -hmm. and in relation to the content of the text, okay. racism. Mm -hmm. Racism. And um, I want us to look at it from two angles. A message about racism and racism, the effect of racism on the life of the people of Botswana and the effect of racism in, reali in realistic uh, form on the life of people of uh, South Africa. The practical experience he had 
and the way she now picture how it should be in her text. I think I once read the short stories of her uh, some years back, and I've been seeing uh, comments here and there on her work. And you know what I do here uh, is that uh, she's not committed to the art, or that she's an escapist, just like uh, the rom the the romantist of uh, yeah of the of the 17th 18th century. So with that, I felt uh, this lady she's not the kind of writer I want to read. Uh, but uh, when I actually confronted her work, and I've, I haven't read uh, When the Rain Clouds Gather and uh, The Question of Power, mm -hmm. then The Cardinals, I got to understand the angle she was coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, Bessie Ed once mentioned that she doesn't want to, she wants to be fired away from the hatred. Yeah. She doesn't want to even talk about it. Why does she need to talk about it? She wants to write about love mm -hmm. and unity. Yeah. But you see, in the same vein, I think uh, she may not have physically protested like uh, Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. or written uh, poetry against uh, the the apartheid mm -hmm. system of South Africa like uh, Mazizi Kunene, mm -hmm. Otto Micheli, yeah. and uh, uh, even the, or like uh, Robert Sobukwe mm -hmm. or Atofugad and the rest who wrote against the apartheid system. Mm -hmm. She, but at the end of the day, ours was still more like uh, it's still a protest mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. because she was not. Uh, exploring the physical uh, damage that the apartheid system was causing. Mm. She was rather exploring the psychological mm. aspect. Mm. Her push or yeah. her need to find inner peace yeah. was because of the trouble she background she yeah. came from. Mm. So you can see that there is that correlation still. Even while talking about love, mm. she was talking about love as against the hatred that existed yeah. in the South African society. Mm. Gilbert was a white man mm. living peacefully with the African society. Right. He had come to add to what the people have, to show them the path mm -hmm. that they should follow. And yeah. people accepted him. Even yeah. he ate their food yeah. and yeah. was communicating with them fine. Mm -hmm. As against what was obtainable in, in the South African society, mm -hmm. where the white man looked at the black man as yeah, an inferior that yeah. cannot mm -hmm. even sit on the same room with him, not even talk of the same seat. Share a piece of land together with Yeah. Him. So you see that, the, the, that that closeness was more like a punch uh, uh, to the apartheid, apartheid system, mm. where they felt that the blacks and the whites cannot coexist yeah, together, and yeah. Gilbert was there. Mm. And you know, with that, with that uh, closeness, you can see even she he was. Uh, I think probably he got he fell in love with even a black lady there, mm. and it was permissible. Mm. These were things that were strange or that were not permitted by law like in the South Africa in the South Africa. in the South African society. Mm. So Gilbert was there to add, not to take from the people. Mm -hmm. On like, what, like what is happening in the South African society. Yeah. So more like the B Botswana society was in contrast mm. to the South African society. system mm. of, uh, of existence. Mm. So and that is the picture you see there. And she's actually looking at the psychological aspect. So I would not want to call her an escapist like mm. some critics think her to be. I would rather think that she was even far more committed mm. than most others. Yeah. She may not have been talking of the physical brut uh, brutalization yeah. of, the, of the black people. Mm. But she's exploring the psychological impact of mm. apartheid. And uh, yeah, you can see that Gilbert came together with the people, yeah. there was unity, and yeah. they were able to fight against yeah. a common enemy, white yeah. and black, mm -hmm. fighting against the oppressors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if the if the white people in South Africa had done the same thing, there would have been no problem. Yeah. That yeah. the question of living together wasn't yeah. isn't an is, is not the issue here. Mm -hmm. It is exactly. the question of we we'll have a common enemy. Let's yeah. look at how we can defeat that yeah. enemy. Yeah. But rather they make themselves, they make enemies, they make enemies out of themselves mm -hmm. based on their racial orientation. Mm -hmm. So and that is what I think uh, we need. We still we need to need more more needs to be ex explored about yeah. this lady in terms of the psychological or the adverse effect that apartheid has on her. Because when you see hatred, you are seeking love. Yeah. When you see people di uh, disunited, you talk about disunity. Yeah, and right. so she was going the opposite order, but yeah. still she was still attacking the, the apartheid system. That's what, that's what I see there. Even she herself may not have envisaged yeah. that because she said, no, I don't want to talk about the hatred. I don't want to write about it. Yeah. Let me write about love yeah. and about cultivation, about planting, about being close to yeah. the soil. Yeah. But still, you see that connection, that experience yeah. forms the background for a novel. In the, in the, in the novel, you see that the, the, uh, Ma, 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 Makaya yeah. Escaped from Makaya Ma Ma Maseku, escaped from South Africa yeah. to, yeah. This, to the, to the, the village in Botswana, and mm -hmm. there he found love. Yeah. Yeah. There he found unity, he found cooperation mm -hmm. amongst uh, the races. Yeah. 
which was not obtainable where he came from. So he was seeing something different. Mm -hmm. And he, he, became, he got to know that, yes, even despite the fact that a white man and a black man cannot be seen together in South Africa, there was that connection, that interaction, that closeness, that affinity in Botswana society. And that is where you begin to appreciate Bessie Head because you see that she was actually indirectly, or it may, it may even be annoyingly to her, she was preaching against the hatred the, the the segregation that existed in the south african society yeah, which yeah. so many african uh, authors have written mm -hmm. things on name it from Atofugad, yeah. mazizi kunene yeah. and the rest of them like that mm -hmm. so at the end of the day you can see like we were talking about oppression the other time mm -hmm. no oppressive system lasts for too long yeah. you can you can sell a lie for 20 years yeah. one day the truth mm -hmm. will come out and today where's the apartheid system today yeah. It, is, it doesn't exist anymore, even though despite the fact that the, uh, the, 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 the gap between the, the blacks and the whites in South Africa is still yeah. not breached. Yeah. Yeah. But s still we can say that something has been done yeah. to that effect. There has been much progress from the way it was exactly. in the past. Uh, actually, he's saying that you don't fight uh, war with war. Mm. You fight war with peace. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the only way you can get relieved. Mm. That's the only way you can have the rain. And the gathering of the people itself could not have been relevant if there is no collectivism. Yeah. Remove race from your life, consider your common uh, problem, and uh, work together and you achieve that. That exactly. is the globalization. Exactly. When you are talking about United Nations, yeah. that is a concept she's trying to convey. And she's more of the difference between her from what I observe is that she's more of a result oriented person, not problem-oriented writer. Most writers on the other part of the world, they showcase the problem that they face, yeah. but they never provide the solution. They create more hatred for those people who might have... Uh, and uh, if you are looking at the mistake of the forefathers, to judge those ones, that's yeah. going to be unfair to them. We, we, we should yeah. not, we should not uh, judge the present based on the parameters yeah, of, the past. of the past. Yeah, we don't do that. You, you we, losing that is going to be unfair, it's unfair judgment. Definitely, definitely. Because those who did that that time were not, they're not the same people that are uh, on the ground now. Mm -hmm. Reorientating them to work together with those who have been oppressed or who had been oppressed in the past mm -hmm. could have been the only way to solve the problem. So instead of her to look at her pain, and she just look find a character escaping just like her, and uh, show the picture of what she found on the ground, which is contrary to what we have on the other side of the world, which is South Africa. This is a very interesting uh, um, uh, creative write-up written by Bessie Head. So this is exactly what this very powerful writer uh, discuss in the context. Even of it mirrors the current. What you said now mirrors the, the current situation in the South African yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because they, they are they, now trying to exploit or yeah, even become a monster to the white minority. Uh, the, the, black, no, the, the black minority. The, 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 that's, that's what I'm the saying. The black there. now yeah. trying to use the power they have now to suppress the white in the country. Even the even the the blacks, the foreigners who are living in their country today. We know uh, what is happening. Xenophobic, xenophobic attack. attacks that yeah. is there. So it's yeah. yeah it's being jealous of, of the fact that those one are more industrious than them. Anyway, uh, we have learned our lesson from this very powerful uh, creative work. When we we'll meet again next time, we'll be discussing about another unique work of a great writer in another context. So see you then. This is CBA. <laughs>